Um, so good day everyone. My name is Kyle and I'm from Rutgers University. I'm here to present on the assist as needed control of a variable lightweight knee robotic device. My lab partner is CU Chen. Our academic advisor is Professor Jing Yi, and our collaborator from the City College of New York is Professor Hao Su. So the presentation I'll be giving today is broken down into four components which starts with the introduction, then I follow up with the system design, then I go on to the experimental and simulation results, and then I finish with the conclusion and future work. So as this talk, this talk is about variable assistive um, devices, the, the idea of research in this area is that these devices have the ability to improve mobility and reduce work-related injuries in industry. These devices generally are made of uh, three components, the actuation mechanism, the human in intention detection unit, and a control unit which is based on a given strategy. The challenges that researchers generally face when designing these systems are the detection of the human intention, uh, the response of the system, the weight of the actual system, and the power output of the system. For our contribution into this area, what we aim to do is to utilize a virtual quasi direct drive which has been developed at City College. And this, the reason why we use this device is that this device has an increased bandwidth over conventional series elastic actuators. The output torque is relatively high. It is also highly back drivable. The our, int our intent detection system that we use is based on a synergy is based on a synergy uh, based um, new network predictor. We use a modulative controller as our control strategy, and we show in the end that this design that we, we came up with has the ability to reduce energy consumption of the limbs that the device is attached to. So moving on to the next section, we present here an overview of the actual system. So the three components I'll be discussing in this section are the human muscle synergy model, the QDD exoskeleton, and the model predictive control. So moving on to the next section, we have here the muscle synergy model. So muscle synergy is actually just a, it represents a group of muscles which act together at a fixed activation ratio. So for example, if you are grabbing for an object, you have a set of muscles that act together to, um, to reach for that object. Similarly, you may be doing another action and you may have a similar set of muscles which act together to complete that given task. And what we realize is that we can use that, 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 um, that information to predict what the human is intended to do. So in that sense, we use the joint angles and the joint angle velocities from the muscle synergy model to predict what the human, what the human torque would be. And that is, that, that forms the basis of our human intent detection uh, component of our system. So moving on to the next section, which is the QDD as a skeleton. This, uh, this slide here presents the schematic of the dynamic model of the human skeleton interactions. And here I present also the variables and param the variables and parameters are associated with this system. I also present here the dynamic equations for each subsystem. And these subsystems are the electromechanical subsystem, the torque transmission system, and the human interface uh, subsystem. And from these dynamic equations, we are able to build the state space model, which represents the entire um, system. Now, this state space model is one um, order of one less than the original system, simply because we assume that the inductance is relatively small, and therefore the impedance um, associated with this entire system can be neglected because of the major operation that we will be operating in. So. This, um, this model is, the response to this model is based off of the state, the state space um, model that's been in here. But what if we would like to change the response of this system? And to do that, we develop 
our um, desired dynamic equation, which is shown here, which is shown right here. So with that dynamic equation, we achieve this dynamic equation by utilizing the input um, voltage VC and using feedback control to, to, to change the dynamics of the system as we've shown here. And this is how eventually you would acquire the, des the desired dynamics of the system that you want. Given that you have the desired dynamics um, of the system, we then move on to developing the MPC controller. So our MPC controller is based on solving an objective function, which is shown here in J. And this objective function aims to minimize the reference error of the system and also the input, um, the, the control input to the system. So the objective function is also satisfied by ensuring that we, we have the system operate within a certain set of constraints and these constraints are tied to the normal operation of the human knee. We also look at, at defining the reference torque, which is shown here at the, the last um, point. And in this reference torque, we set the desired torque of the device to be a scaled version of the, the, the desired human torque. And in, in such as setting that the value of alpha to be between zero and one, we then require that the human provides a portion of the initial um, torque without the device. So therefore the human action, the human movement would be similar to the original, the original movement without the device. Now that that is completed, we then move on to the experimental and simulation results. So the experiment was set up first by collecting data from EMG and ground reaction forces and also um, Vicon motion capture data from four subjects. For our simulation, we simulated the QD device in MATLAB and interfaced it with the MATLAB open framework open sim interface. And the simulation was done for values of alpha at 0.25% and 50%. And from those simulated results, we were able to determine the synergy activation and also calculate the image power rate for each value of alpha. So in this slide here, where we begin with the muscle synergy, this is actually data collected from um, the experimental results. We show here on the left-hand image, we show four synergies and note that the first and fourth synergies are associated with the knee and that those are associated with extension and retraction, while the two synergies, um, the second and third, are associated with the ankle movement. On the human's, human muscle synergy activation from the MG graph, we know that the peaks in these graphs are associated generally with certain actions. So if, for example, in the first graph we look at, um, that is the peak is associated with the person beginning to walk. So each uh, peak is associated with a given action. Moving on to the, the second set of results, we show here in the angles and the, the torques. I show for the angles that at each value of alpha, we do not deviate much from the actual reference values of the angles. And we show here in the, in the second um, the torque graph that we are able to reduce the, the value of the applied torque as we incre increase the value of alpha. Here in the muscle activation, we show for C1, the synergy activation for C1, that has reduced as we increase the value of alpha, while for C2, we show that in this case, the value of alpha has been, the value of, as the value of alpha increases, the synergy activation has increased. So this is most likely due to the other muscles trying to activate to stabilize the leg as it, as it receives an external um, stimulus, which is from the QD device. Finally, we look at the metabolic cost for this device, and we show that for the hamstring and for the gastric muscles, that we are able to reduce the cost associated with the, the leg. So as the value of alpha increases, the metabolic cost increases. And finally, I conclude 
with the remarks that we were able to develop the assist as needed interface um, for this QDD system and we implemented it using a PC controller. The benefits of using this system is that we have high torque and it's high, the device is highly battery and we showed in OpenSync that we were able to reduce the torque applied by the human. Finally, we know that um, for our future work, we plan to implement and validate this system. And we also plan to look at how the value of alpha can be selected and how it relates to human at what cost and mass synergies. And finally, we look to investigate how the human adaptation responses to wearing this device um, affects the individual and how can we lessen that ad adaptation. Thank you everyone for your time. If you any, have any questions or comments, you may contact me through the contact information given here on this slide. Thank you.